Are you looking for new bands for the record label? I mean, is it, are you encouraging bands to send? We do. We, we're not doing a big release schedule. What we've been more involved with is production music. Uh -huh. um, we've been putting music in movies and TV, which is an interesting phenomenon because you can actually pay the bands money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which is amazing, you know. I put your stuff in a movie, here's a ton of money and it's all yours. And they're like, wow. So and it's kind of a new model. And how did you get involved with these? I mean, how did you get your first, uh, you know, get, because Pitch Shifter's music was used for films and Oh yeah, games. it's been used on everything. Were yeah. you approached or how did that? Um, we, we spin it out there, we put it out there in licensing reels and stuff. Pitch Shifter's been on absolutely everything. Um, internet, video games, TV, movies, industrial uses, pe wakeboarding videos, snowboarding videos, everything you can think of. And through those connections, we just kind of feed the underground of new artists that signed to PSI records into that system and we do try to do the right. I've signed, personally signed so many atrocious contracts in my life <laughs> yeah. that, we try and make, kind? <laughs> <laughs> that we try and make it all super above board and this is what you're going to get and this is how it's going to work and it's, you know, people work with us because they want it. It's been, it's been super fortuitous relationships so far so okay. we don't want to be like the fat cat record label guys yeah. smoking but a cigar. Also, it's a mind. diverse way to put it. Again, it reflects the ethos of pitch shift, just a totally diverse way of pushing music. The industry as such is being so strangulated uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, that it, it's just a good way to get new music into different areas that people wouldn't necessarily hear it rather than trying to push it through traditional channels. Yeah, yeah. I can see that you guys know quite a lot about the music industry to the point that you actually taught a class through uh, I, uh, Apple yeah. Eyesight yeah. for kids. Can you tell me about this? Because you're a prof professor now. Yeah. <laughs> professor John <laughs> Clayton. You need some qualifications so. for that. <laughs> um, I got approached by a middle school of kids who were like 12 mm. to do um, teach a class but it was in a different part of the states and they live in quite far away so I said why don't we do it by video conference so they had a big screen and I <coughs> taught a class if you will to kids about music and the music business via eyesight Apple video conference that's pretty cool how old were they oh. like 11 to 13 they'd all written songs and they'd uh, <laughs> emailed the mp3s of the songs and I had to critique the songs and tell them and some of the stuff was really good I mean some of the kids are doing like um, a cappella tracks on their own, which is really ballsy, you know, I wouldn't do yeah. that. And it was really good stuff. Yeah, it was interesting. Is this something you're, you're, tr you're looking at doing more regularly? I don't know. I don't know if I'm much of a <laughs> role model. <laughs> <laughs> we're also available for children's parties. You know. <laughs> I don't know, it was good. I don't know if we're the kind of right people to do it, but... <laughs> <laughs> I think any, any, anything that you can do to... I mean, no one else is going to look after the music business except musicians. Mm -hmm. So anything sure. you can do to get kids involved in it, and I'm not being all utopian about it, mm -hmm. but it's, it's harsher than their wildest dreams, so anything you can do to skip out a few levels of hell for them and <laughs> yeah. just give them some way to look after themselves.